Hello. So we're going to continue on doing some geometry today. And we are only, we only have a few problems to do. Um, we have two guided learning pages and we also are problems. And we also have only about four problems to do. So I'm going to fold my paper into four squares because I want to have a little bit of room. When you're drawing angles, you kind of need a little bit more room. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and screen share my page so that you can see it. And here we go. So I'm only folding it into four. I am gonna use the square that has my name on it. So I'm not gonna waste that little square. <laughs> All right. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I zoomed in really close on the last lesson, so I'm just zooming out a little bit. So I'm writing my name in the corner, and we're doing lesson 9.2. And we're doing pages 96 through 97. We're going to start out with number one, which we'll put right here. And then we're gonna do number two over here. And then we have some practice problems. We're gonna do one, two, three, and four, we're drawing three different angles. So on four, we can just take up this whole section, okay, on the back. We're giving ourselves plenty of room, okay. So when you're drawing angles, I like to use a drawing triangle to do that. And um, you can also use your protractor to draw angles as well. Um, your protractor has a straight side that you can use. Um, some people like to use a ruler and you can put a ruler on here. Drawing triangles have different angles. And so sometimes you can use a ruler and, and run it along your drawing triangle. You have to hold this really firm with your hand, right? If I wanted a 90 degree angle, I could go like this and draw right there and I'd have a 90 degree angle by using a ruler and my drawing triangle, right? So there are lots of different ways that you can draw angles, but I like using a drawing triangle because it's a little bit smaller. Mine is smaller than a ruler. So it's not gonna get in my way. So the first thing we're gonna do on number one, it's asking us to draw a ray and label it QP. Using point Q as the vertex, draw an angle PQR. So first thing I'm gonna do is draw a ray. So a ray looks like this. An array, we know that from our vocabulary earlier in the week. So it's asking me to draw a ray and we're labeling it QP. Q is the vertex. So I'm putting that right here. And then I'm putting P right here. That looks like a D, but it's really a P. <laughs> it said Q is the vertex. And now I'm gonna draw a PQR angle that measures 55 degrees so that QP lies above QR. So that means that this has, my protractor has to go this way. So I'm going like this. It's telling me that QP is gonna be above QR. So QR is gonna come down here. And I'm using my zero scale right here because this is where my line is, my ray is. So I need to do 55 degrees. So I'm gonna count, start at zero, go all the way to 55, and I'm gonna put a mark right here between 60 and 50. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can really see that. And hopefully, if I slide my paper a little bit, you can see it without the glare. There we go. So I'm just putting a little mark right here because they told me it had to be 55. So I wanna go right here between 50 and 60 
and my mark's gonna be halfway between 50 and 60. Then I'm gonna take, I can take my protractor and I'm gonna line it up right here. And this is R and this is 55 degrees. Okay, so I didn't really use my drawing triangle. I just used my um, protractor. So let's do another one. Let's do number two. This time we're drawing QP and QP has to be below. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it kind of down here. This is Q, this is P, and they said it has to be above. So my angle's gonna be right here. So I need to go 55. So I'm gonna put my protractor right here on the vertex. Okay, so I've gone like this, it's on the vertex. And my zero, you always are really aware of where the zero is. My zero is right here. So I wanna come up, here's 50 and 60, and I'm gonna put a mark right here between 50 and 60. And I just put a little line. Now I know where I'm gonna put the angle. And then I take my protractor, I go right here. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see. And this has to be an R, and this is gonna measure 55 degrees, right? It looks just like the other angle <laughs> because they're both 55. They wanted you to use the inside scale and the outside scale. And that's why they did that. That's why they made one line above and one line below, okay? So that was pretty easy. Now, on a copy of these line segments, use a protractor to draw angles, okay? So I am drawing on number one, I'm gonna use my drawing triangle. I'm gonna come out a little farther so you can see, and I'm gonna draw exactly what's in the book. I'm just drawing a line, and this is A, this is B. And this right here in the middle is C. They have like a little line through it and then they have a dot, a point. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm seeing in the book. And it says on line AB, draw an angle whose measure is greater than 45, but less than 90. And I'm drawing it at point C. So it has to be greater than 45, but less than 90. So I'm gonna show you, this is what 90 looks like because my drawing triangle is 90 degrees. So that means it has to go from there, that's 90, right? And 45 is gonna be right here. Forty-five is right here. So this is what we're aiming for. It has to be somewhere between these two, right? Less than 90, but greater than 45. So that's easy. Now I'm just gonna put my line, let's make it at 60. So I'm gonna put my protractor down and I'm gonna start at zero. I come over here and I'm gonna put a mark right here at 60, okay? Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see exactly, can you guys see, even though there's glare, boop, there we go, now there's no more glare. So I put my protractor down and I came over here from zero on the outside scale and I went up to 60, right? And now I'm going to put my line right here. So it's less than 90, 
and it's greater than 45. And I'm making it nice and dark. And it told me I have to make this an AB drawn angle. It doesn't say I have to label it. Let's call it D though. <laughs> because now I have ACD and it's 60 degrees. All right, so that was pretty easy. Now we're gonna do number two. Number two has C, E, and D, and it's kind of at a little bit of a slope. It looks like a teeter-totter. So I'm gonna go like this. And when you hold, um, when you're using a drawing triangle or a protractor, you wanna have a nice firm hold when you do that. So if I were to zoom out, I'm using three of my fingers to hold it down, right? If you just use one finger, you're gonna move, it's gonna move while you're drawing. So you wanna have like a nice firm hold, use like a couple or three fingers before you draw your line. Also, I am only using pen so that you can see. I would never do this with a pen. In real life, if I'm making angles, I always use a pencil so that if I make a mistake, I can erase. All right, so I don't recommend using pen. I recommend using pencil. The only reason I use pen is because you can't see pencil very well. So I have C. So in other words, if you're using a pen right now, you might want to pause this and go get a pencil in case you make a boo-boo. This is D, this is C, and this middle point right here is E. Looks just like my book. Okay, on line CD, draw an angle whose measure is at the 125 degrees at point E. So I'm gonna use my drawing triangle to show me what a right angle is. So I'm setting it down. I know that this is 90 degrees, right? And that kind of helps me to know that 125 is going to be past that. It's either going to be over here or over here. So I'm going to put my protractor down. I'm sorry about the glare. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I know that it's got to be bigger than 90. So I'm starting over here at the inner scale because here's my zero. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 90, 100, 120. So it's gonna be between 120 and 130 right here. Okay, and then I put a little mark and then I'm gonna go ahead and draw the line in. And what we're measuring is this. And C, D, E, F, let's call this F. So the measurement, we've gone past 90 and I drew the 90 and so you could see it. This is now at 125. And we know it's 125 because we can see that it's greater than 90, right? Okay. All right, now, Number three says we have an angle called DEF and it's 140. So on the back of my paper, I'm going to draw DEF. So I'm going to start out with DE. I put my point here. Right? And it's E is the vertex, so I'm gonna put E there. This is gonna be D. And then it tells me I have to have 140. So that means it's gonna be greater than, it's gonna go way out here onto number four, right? Cause it's gonna be greater than. In fact, I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna come down here and do it below my line. Be tricky. So this is 90. I know because my drawing triangle is telling me that that's what 90 is. So if I have to make it 140, 
it's going to be way out here, right? So I'm going to put my protractor down. I'm going to start over here with zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 100, 130, 140, right here. I'm not using the outer scale that says 40. I'm using 140. And then I'm going to go ahead and go like this. And this is F, uh-oh, <laughs> this is F right here. So now I have angle D, E, F and it's 140 degrees because they told me it had to be, okay? Now, number four, they're asking us to do three different angles and they're not too picky about it. So this is gonna be pretty easy. They're not telling us what degrees so the first thing we have to draw a right angle. So let's draw one line. And then to draw a right angle, if I use my drawing triangle, I can just lay it along here. Now, if you don't have a drawing triangle, I'm drawing the right angle. If you don't have a drawing triangle, you can go like this and measure it out and find 90, put a little mark up here, right? And then mark that. Also, it's going to have a square because it's 90 degrees. And it's also probably going to need a name. So I'm going to name it A, B, C. And that's a right angle. And I put a little square in it because it's a right angle. Now I have to draw an acute angle. So that means that I'm going to put another line. Let's do D, E, F. So this just has to be less than 90. So if 90 is right here with my drawing triangle, this is why drawing triangles are so awesome. If this is 90 and I'm drawing an acute angle, this is A, right? Problem A, this is B. So if it's acute, any angle that's on the other side of this is gonna be acute. That was easy. So this is an acute angle, angle D, E, F. Let's go like this. We'll call this A, B, C. And we'll call this D, E, D, E, F. G, H, I is our next one. Let's do um, P, Q, R for the last one since we're on the alphabet. This one has to be obtuse. So again, I'm gonna draw a line. P, Q, and then this is, if this is 90 degrees, I use my drawing triangle this way. If this is 90 degrees, I know it has to be greater than 90, so I can just go like this, make it greater than 90. And now I have angle P, Q, R, and it is obtuse. All right, so I hope this helped you figure out how to draw angles. Um, if you don't have these two tools, you're gonna wanna pick it up on my porch or in the lobby of the school by the office, right? You just go through the front doors of the school, you knock on them, someone will let you in and you can get what you need. All right, thanks for joining me. Hope you are also loving geometry as much as I do.
I don't know that that's possible because I love geometry a lot. All right, thanks for joining me.